got no plans, we got nothing to do You tell me you love me, I go start the Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my first time testing MAC Cosmetics. In the past, MAC used to rule the beauty world. They came out with innovative products that people just loved. I think we've all noticed that MAC stopped being a very popular brand. I think part of that has to do with them not really coming out with any more innovative products, more brands coming out and being able to do what they were doing, and also not being a cruelty-free brand. Despite those things, MAC still produces products that are people's holy grail products, such as their Fix Plus, Paint Pots, and MAC Face and Body. I've kind of been wanting to take a step back from all the new makeup releases and really focus on holy grail products. I want products in my collection that I want and love and want to use every day. And I'm kind of just over testing out new products that just aren't good. So if you're excited for this video and to see my thoughts on MAC Cosmetics, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, hi, my name is Tosh. Welcome to my channel. I hope that you will consider subscribing before you leave. And let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I'm going to apply my SPF. This is the Australian Gold Mineral Lotion Non-Greasy Sunscreen. I don't know who needs to hear it, but wear your sunscreen. Wear it. This is a great sunscreen, especially if you have oily skin or maybe combo skin, because it sets down to be like a satin finish. And I kind of want something that is a little bit more mattifying, just because the next product we're going to go in with is a little bit shiny, from what I understand. I also really love this sunscreen because it almost feels like a primer going on. And even though it's a mineral sunscreen, it has a slight tint so that it doesn't give you that white cast on your face. It's not a tint enough that's going to actually like cover anything, but it just makes it so you don't have that white cast on your skin. The first MAC product I'm going to be going in with is the Face and Body Foundation. Mine is in the shade C1. This is a very liquidy foundation. You can hear it. And I have done a lot of research on this foundation because this is not a foundation that you can apply normally. I mean, you can, but you're not going to get as good of results as you would if you used it the way that they intended it to look. This one has like a technology in it to where once you're blending it and mixing it together, it starts to become thicker and tackier, which then helps it adhere to the face more. So let's go ahead and try this. And because of this technology, it is recommended that you do use it with your hands. I have heard that people will mix it a lot until it becomes thick and then they will apply it. I'm gonna try it with my hands. It still feels very thin. There it goes, okay. This almost turned into a cream, kind of feels like. I'm not sure if you can see that now. Okay. This foundation is supposed to be a very sheer foundation, so today's look is probably going to be a very good natural summery look. So it's supposed to be sheer and then also have a natural skin-like finish. This is supposed to be like that Your Skin But Better foundation. It does feel a little bit thicker now that it is on the skin. There are definitely some pros and cons to putting foundation on with your hands. Obviously, number one is that your hands are now dirty. And that's not always the best feeling. The next con is I feel like I get less coverage when I do use my hands. Now the benefits to using your hands is that it really helps melt the product into your skin, which is often why I use my hands with concealer. I just really like how it sits on the skin very, I don't, I don't know, very melty, melty. It just looks more natural. The other benefit is that your hands are probably cleaner than your sponges and your brushes. So it actually is probably more hygienic. And if I did not say it, make sure your hands are clean before you start. <laughs> Definitely don't want dirty hands when you start this. So I'm just working this into my skin. I don't like how it's sticking between my fingers though. This shade is a little off for me. And by the way, their shade range is not as good as I thought it was going to be. I do understand that this is a sheer product, so having it match perfectly isn't as needed as it would be for like a full coverage. But still, they could definitely improve on their shade range. And maybe that's another reason why people don't go for MAC. I don't know. I don't know if my skin looks any better at all. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure if this did much for me. This is definitely not a foundation if you have stuff you want to cover. And like, I do. <laughs> but I could see this. I could see why people like this for every day if they have really nice skin. Or maybe they just want to cover up a little bit of redness. It feels pretty tacky on my skin. 
Tacky is not necessarily a bad thing. I feel like when something is tacky, it's really gripping onto my skin. Also to me, that tells me that this foundation is flexible. So if you get creases in your smile lines, forehead, this is gonna be one that moves with your skin. So if you're smiling or mm, whatever you're doing, whatever faces you're making, hopefully it's not gonna settle. I don't know that. I haven't put this through a wear test or anything. Something I have learned about this foundation is you need to let it set a little bit before you go in with your next layer. And with the next layer, you don't really wanna be rubbing as much as you wanna be patting. That way you're not disrupting the layer underneath. I feel like I mix for about 20 seconds before it starts to feel tacky. Seems like the more product you have, the longer it takes to get tacky. So now with this layer, I'm gonna go ahead and press. They do say that this can build up to be a medium coverage, which if that is the case, that would make me happy. Yeah, I can, it built up a little bit, I'd say. I can tell as I'm adding layers, it is feeling a little bit heavier, a little bit greasy. It's been about five minutes since I've applied this foundation and it has set down to a very beautiful, almost satin, slightly dewy foundation. That could also be because of the sunscreen that I put down, so I'm not sure. This isn't specifically a foundation review, so just take what I'm saying with just as my first impression. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I will definitely have to keep you guys updated. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if I'm gonna use a sheer product, I want something that's easier to use, something that's just quick, fast, get me out the door. This requires just a little bit more work than I would like for a sheer foundation. For concealer, I'm gonna be going in with the Flower Beauty Light Illusions Concealer in the shade Fair. This is a very hydrating foundation, so I thought it might work well with this. I think that worked okay. It was a little finicky there for a little bit. Um, definitely my hands helped blend it in, mesh them together a little bit better. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm feeling. I feel like that's a foundation I'm definitely gonna have to test out a little more. It's not a no, it's not a yes yet. <laughs> Also, this concealer is very creamy and hydrating, so I think it's gonna crease a lot more under my eyes than I want it to, so I'm kind of considering going in with powder. And while I'm waiting for that to set down, I'm gonna go in with the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the shade Soft Brown. This one's nice because it's not too warm tone. I'm gonna wait on the powder for now and I'm gonna go ahead and apply my Fenty Cream Bronzer in the shade Butta Biscuit. If you did not see the video that I made with Fenty products, check that out. If you wanna check that out, I will link it in the eye and down below. Ever since I got this bronzer, I cannot put it down. I absolutely love it. It looks very, very natural. I would suggest if you want something a little more bold to go in with the shade above what you think you would normally get, just because it is a very sheer formula. And how I've been applying bronzer lately is I have my crease right here, but I wanna go above because I'm trying to lift my cheekbones a little bit. I feel like I, my face is very round lately as I've been saying over and over again. So when I go down lower, it's adding to the roundness of my cheeks. So I'm trying to avoid that by just going up a little bit higher. I've been also liking to apply bronzer right here. I've kind of always done that, but I've been just kind of focusing on a little bit more lately just because I think it helps pull my face in a little bit more and not look so chunky monkey. I have two options for blush here. I have the Glow Play Blush in the shade So Natural, and I have their powder blush in Mocha. Since this is a very summery, natural look, I think it's only fitting to go in with the Glow Play Blush in So Natural. I've heard that this is kind of like a putty and a cream to matte formula, so that makes me think of the ColourPop Super Shock blushes, so let's just see. Oh, definitely cushiony. Yeah, that feels very similar to a ColourPop Super Shock blush. Maybe a little squishier. Very peachy and so natural. <laughs> then it does blend out to feel like a powder. For cream products, I really love going in with this Luxie 512 Small Contouring Brush. I've also used this for foundation and I love it. It's one of my favorite brushes. I feel like I want five of this brush. Okay. Also with blush, I've been trying to stay away from down here and I'm trying to focus a little bit more back here just to help lift my face a little more. And again, bringing it all the way up here to help pull in my face a little more. So first impressions, I like it. I don't think it's mind blowing. I'm not sure if I think it's worth the price yet. I need to try it again. And this is exactly why I don't love first impressions, just because I feel like I don't have my opinions formed yet and I, I don't wanna say, that I love something or hate something because 
I could change my mind. And this could be performing totally different due to my foundation. I'm not really sure. As of right now, it's just not blowing me away. It's fine. It's it's cute. It has a nice little sheen. Maybe that is also the foundation. I'm not sure. This concealer is definitely creasing, so I'm going to go ahead and set it. This is my favorite powder, the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder in the shade Translucent Light. I love this one because it leaves almost like a sheen on your skin. And in pictures and videos, it looks like you have a filter on your skin. It's very beautiful. Not all powders are created equal, especially for dry skin. I'm just going to say that. Powders is one of those things that I am willing to pay a higher price for because powders are not all the same. So people who try to claim that the Fit Me powder is as good as Laura Mercier, they're lying to you. They're lying. And I'm only applying a very light amount. I just go in with a little bit in the cap, tap it in, and tap as much of it away as I can. I go in with a super, super light amount. Now this is specifically for dry skin. When I had oily skin before Accutane, I used to love to bake. So it is gonna be different depending on your skin type. For dry skin, I would recommend as less powder as possible. And this container that I've had, I've had this for almost two years. It's lasted me a long time. Again, I don't use it to bake. This is just, I use it to, I use it to spot powder. So very light amount. Tap out the creases on the under eyes first and then go in with your powder. Very lightly. And I'm just gonna take that and go into spots that I don't want it to be as shiny. So this next product is not a MAC product, but I just got it and I'm dying to try it. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Mine is in the shade Fair One. I'm so excited. First Charlotte Tilbury product ever. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Does it smell? I'm going to use this as my highlighter today. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Well, that was anticlimactic. I know that this is one you can apply underneath. You can mix it with foundations. I just want to try it on top of this. I think maybe with a different foundation, it would have a more impressive effect. It definitely looks glowy and pretty. Man, are my standards too high? I don't know if my standards are too high or if people just like overhype shit. I'm not, I don't know. You build something up in your head that it's gonna be like incredible. And it's just like, wah, wah, wah. We'll see, we'll see. That one could have a comeback, could have a comeback. Before I do my eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my lip products. That way I can see kind of what eye look I wanna do. So now I have my first ever MAC lip products. I got my lip pencil in the shade Whirl and I got the satin lipstick in the shade Faux. This lipstick is the whole reason that I wanted to place this order. I saw this on somebody and it looked right at my alley. So we will see. When I open this up, it's definitely not as cool tone as I thought it was gonna be. So hopefully it's gonna look how I hoped it would look. Let's see if MAC lip pencils and lipstick is worth the hype. <laughs> you guys, it's a lip pencil. I don't know. I feel like my ColourPop lip liner does the same. I don't know. I don't know, guys. This video wasn't turning out how I wanted it to. I thought these were gonna be like, I thought these were gonna be like must have products, like I need it. And so far, everything I've tried, I haven't needed. Okay, lipstick, fix it for me. Everyone always talks about the smell of MAC lipsticks and it reminds me of something. The smell reminds me a lot of the ColourPop Luxe lipsticks. Okay, that's coming out a lot different. Look at that. Look at this color compared to the lip tube. Okay. Okay, I like that one. I like that one. It feels very creamy, but not overly emollient. I love satin lip products because they give you that nice sheen on your lips without being overly glossy or too matte. They're kind of like the perfect, perfect thing for me. I bet that would look really pretty with my ColourPop BFF lip liner. So lipstick a win. Not sure if it's worth the price yet. Lip liner, a good lip liner, but, but I'd probably rather buy just ColourPop lip liners. Before I go in with my eye makeup, I'm gonna go in with the MAC Fix Plus. This is one of those products you just always hear about and I am excited to try it. Let's check the mist. Ooh, <laughs> why did I jump? Okay, 
That smells really nice. It's not overpowering. It's just a very light scent. I didn't love that mister. It was slightly aggressive. <laughs> I feel like mists have really taken a step forward since this product was probably created. Now most mists have a very fine mist. That one was a little, little bit much, a little much. That left a nice little sheen on my skin. Very pretty, very glowy. I like that one. Okay, we got we got two we got two sort of wins so far. Now we are on to the big daddy, Mac Paint Pot. This is one of those products that you still hear about today. So many people use this as an eye primer. I got mine in the shade Painterly. Now let's make this a little more interesting. I also picked up the new ColourPop Cream Shadow in the shade Laurel, which I'm sure as many of you might have thought, is that a MAC Paint Pot dupe? So I'm gonna test it out. Obviously I have not tried the MAC Paint Pot enough to really get a grasp of how well it works. So this is just gonna be like a pre-test. This is how they look next to each other. This one is MAC, this one is ColourPop. I switched them around to see if the lighting was maybe messing with it a little bit. This one right here is MAC, this one right here is ColourPop. This one right here is MAC, this one right here is ColourPop. When I was grabbing them out of the pots, the MAC definitely felt more creamy where the ColourPop felt a little more waxy, but on the skin, they feel exactly the same. They both dry down and at the same type of speed. Interesting. These two brushes are about as similar as I have, so this is what I'm gonna use to apply them so that I use two different brushes. This one is a wet and wild brush. This one is just an art kit one that I got with some face painting creams. So I'm gonna go into MAC with this one. This is a really good color match for me. I really debated between painterly and soft ochre. I know a lot of people really love soft ochre, but I don't really want that yellow base on my eye, and I was scared this was gonna be too dark, but it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I've been wanting to pick up a MAC paint pot for years at this point, but I was kind of nervous that it might be too drying on my eyes. But honestly, it doesn't look like it's emphasizing any texture or anything. I'm pleasantly pleased. Now I'm gonna go in with Laurel. I feel like since this one is a little more waxy and less creamy, that it's not spreading as easily. Could also be the brush, I'm not sure. I think the MAC one looks slightly more smooth on my eyelid. I go with my finger to just kind of get closer here. Yeah, this one looks slightly more textured on my eyelid. Nothing crazy. For my eyes, I'm gonna go on with the Kaleidos Futurism 3 Astro Pink Palette. The packaging of this kind of reminds me of like a Pat McGrath type of style. For the eyes, I'm gonna stick with that very natural kind of summery makeup look. First, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here called Lunar, and I'm just gonna put that right in my crease. This one might be the same color as the paint bot, so I'm not sure how much it'll show up, but. I can feel the paint pot gripping onto my shadow, which is definitely not a bad thing. By the way, this is the Luxie 231 Small Tapered Blending Brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch it and go underneath my eye. And I only have one of this brush, so I am just gonna use this one for this side. This ColourPop one does not feel as tacky as the other one. It's applying a little more smoothly, which I suppose is nice, but that might also mean it's not as long lasting as the MAC Paint Pot. It's looking a little more pigmented on this side too. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like this side is applying more smoothly and more pigmented. I'm sure this one can be built up though. I wanna see if I can build up this look a little more, so I'm gonna go in with the shade right here called Stardust, and I'm focusing it just kind of on the outer corner. Those shades are pretty similar, but Stardust is just a little bit darker and a little more mauve, which I think fits in very well with my lip color. These shadows blend so smoothly. I love the formula of Kaleidos eyeshadows. A lot of people call this brand Kaleidos, and that's what I thought it was at first too, but if you go to their Instagram, they have like a little pronunciation thing, and it looks like it says Kaleidos, so that's kind of what I've been calling them, but I have heard it used both ways. I just got this new Super Shock Shadow in the shade Ritz, and I really wanna test it out. It looks like a taupey silver, so let's just try that out. I think this one is gonna be very shimmery, kind of like frog. Ooh. 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 That's pretty. I think I'm gonna carry this up in a diagonal towards my brow bone. Just like the little bit. It just helps the eyelid look like it's wet. That shade Ritz reminds me a lot of Diamond from the So Jaded palette. 
I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to take this little pencil brush just to get into my inner corners. And if you haven't tried the ColourPop Super Shock formula, it's like a putty. Kind of like that blush. I probably got way too much. I do think these apply better with your finger, but sometimes for these harder to reach places, I will go in with a brush. And I do have a new mascara that I wanna try. This is not a MAC product, but I have been waiting to try this. And that is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extension. This is a heavy. So this is supposed to be a flake-free liquid fiber technology that combines fibers and Korean plant extract for longer, thicker lashes. I've had this in my collection for a while now, but I have not tried it and people keep raving about it. So I am excited to use it. I did not expect that to be the wand. Like when I think something with fibers, I would think of a fluffier brush. Oh, what am I doing? I have not curled my eyelashes. When it comes to mascaras, I only like to have a couple open at a time, which is why I've had that ones for so long. You're supposed to toss your mascaras every three months. So I really don't like to have that many open just because I feel like it's wasteful. So that's why I've had this one kind of sitting and waiting. I like that the brush is small and I can get into the inner corner here. I am seeing length, but not necessarily volume. You know, now I'm starting to wonder if this isn't the same one that I'm thinking that it is. Cause the one I'm thinking of people call it a tubing mascara. I'm not sure if that is the same as this. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so I'm definitely getting lengthening, just not volume. I like these kind of brushes a lot for the lower lash line. They're a little bit easier to control. I don't know what I think about that. Well, you guys, that is the end of the products. I don't know how this video went, if I'm being honest. I feel a little bit let down. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. What did you guys think? Did you guys think these were like wow products? Do you have any of these? Do you love them? I would love to hear, leave a comment down below. So far, a couple winners. For me, the standout product is the lipstick. For one, I love the shade, I love the sheen. But to be honest, this kind of reminds me of my favorite Rimmel lipstick. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna grab it. So this one is my all time favorite lipstick, the Rimmel London Kate line in the shade 08. It's kind of similar. I want to test the colors. So this one is Kate. This one might be a little warmer. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> oh my God. I think I found a dupe. Wow. Okay. This one right here is the Rimmel London Kate lipstick in 08. And this one is the MAC Faux Satin lipstick. I do think that this one is slightly warmer, but you guys, wow. They really don't look that much different. And the Kate one smells better. But they both leave this kind of sheen on your lips. This one is a satin lipstick. Hmm. And speaking of dupes, I don't know if I would necessarily call them a dupe, but they are very, very similar. When it comes to dupes, I want something that is like exactly the same. And these are slightly different. The ColourPop one is a little more waxy. I think it did show just a small amount of texture. Not anything that I think anyone would actually notice. And this one actually was easier to blend on top of and it made my eyeshadow more pigmented. So this one felt better when I applied it though. So I don't know. Oh, uh, am I a dupe master? <laughs> I might be. <laughs> I'm blown away by that though. Of course I would pick that color, right? I love these like mauve pink colors. Wow. I am impressed with myself. I hope you guys had a good time with me on this video today. I know it's a little bit all over the place, but if you did enjoy it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Follow me on IG, ring the bell. Okay, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys next time. I have two options here. I have the Glow Play Brush. I have two options here. I have the Go, no. I have two options here. I have the Glow, it's hard to say. I got this new ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade, <laughs> here we go again. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Every time, every time. Okay, okay, okay. I'm your sunshine mixed with a little hurricane. White hot angel with the daredevil's brain This feeling I just can't fight it You know all the ways I like it